morning and welcome to Digital SML. How are you all this morning? I want you to think, has there ever been a time that you have told a lie and been found out? Do you know, I think we all have told lies at one time or another because the Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard. I remember a time when I was your age. We were staying in a caravan in my great uncle's farm. We were staying in a little caravan, the ones that are pulled along behind a car. And mum and dad had gone into the farmhouse to make my great uncle his tea. She had left us three children in the caravan. I was reading a book, my two brothers were playing with cars. But you know, I was really hungry and I knew that my mum had hidden some of lovely chocolates, the sort that mummies and daddies eat after the children go to bed. She had hidden these chocolates up on a high shelf behind some books. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted those chocolates. So when I knew the boys weren't watching, and I looked out the window, couldn't see any sign of mum and dad. And I stood on my tiptoes and reached up to the shelf behind the books and brought down a box of after eights. Success! My favourite. Oh, couldn't wait just to have the one. Mmm, after eights. My favourite. Just take one. Mmm, mmm, oh, so good. Mmm, just one more. Mmm, mmm, just take one more and this is it. Mmm, mmm. Oh, oh no, there's mum coming back. Oh, what am I going to do? Put the chunks back up in the high shelf. Right, she'll get on with reading my book. Still not finished it yet. She'll never know. So my mum comes into the caravan. Tanya, have you been eating chocolate? Because she's English. You'll never guess what I said. No, chocolate, no. And she asked me again. Tanya, have you been eating chocolate? And you know what? I think I might've tried to blame my brothers, but for some reason, she didn't believe me. And you know, I did get into a bit of trouble. My mum clearly knew that I had eaten those chocolates. The evidence was plain to see. But even if for some reason she didn't work that out, God still knew that I had told a lie. But the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. That means we just need to say sorry to God and he will forgive us. And, you know, sometimes that means we need to be brave to be able to say sorry, to own up to what we have done. We're going to pray now and then we're going to sing a song called Brave. Let's all pray. Father, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you love us even though we let you down. Even though we, we sin, you have provided a way for us to say sorry and to ask for forgiveness. I just pray that you would help us all um, to be brave and to be able to tell you when we've done wrong and to say sorry. In your name we pray, amen. This song is called Brave. It's all about how God's love makes us brave. We're gonna start by singing, No, I won't be afraid for you are with me. Let's go. No, I won't be afraid. You are with me. You are right. Some O's. Oh, 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 oh. Your love 
was lost and afraid till you found me. Good morning boys and girls and welcome back to SML. I hope you're ready for our story and we'll be learning about Peter today. But before we begin I'm going to ask you a question and it is can you tie your shoelaces? Some of you can, some of you probably can't, maybe some of you just like velcro. But the, those of you who can, could you tie your laces perfectly straight away? You probably couldn't, they're very tricky and you probably made a lot of mistakes at the start. And Peter who we'll be learning about today made a very big mistake. He did something so bad he probably wondered if Jesus would ever forgive him. What would Peter do? Would he stop following Jesus? We'll find out. So Peter and Jesus and the other disciples were eating a special meal and it was a time of year called Passover. And during Passover lots of families or friends would meet up and eat a special dinner together. As they were having this meal, Jesus said something to the disciples. It was very shocking. He said that he would be arrested and bad things were going to happen to him. Peter had heard Jesus talk about suffering and dying before, but he just didn't understand this time. Bravely, Peter promised that he would always stand up for Jesus and that he would go to prison and even die for him. But Jesus said something shocking to Peter. And this comes from the Bible. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Basically what he was saying that Peter would deny knowing Jesus three whole times before the rooster would crow or if you ever heard the rooster go cock a doodle doo in the morning, that's what was happening. Peter couldn't believe it. <clears throat> he was sure that he would never ever deny Jesus. After eating the meal together, Jesus and the disciples went out to a garden. It was a place called Gethsemane and it was a place that they went to pray. It was late at night, and while Jesus was praying to his Father God, the disciples all fell asleep. Perhaps it was because they were late at night and they were tired, or they were tired with the sadness knowing what Jesus had just told them. Even though they couldn't fully understand, they still loved their friend Jesus, and they wanted to keep on following him. Suddenly, the garden was filled with soldiers. The soldiers tied Jesus up and led him away. How do you think Peter felt this, seeing this happen to Jesus? I mean, if I saw a bunch of soldiers come take my friends, I'd be very scared. Maybe Peter was scared or shocked. Maybe he was even angry and annoyed that Jesus was being treated so badly. 
Peter and the other disciples might have been surprised by everything that was happening, but Jesus wasn't. Jesus willingly went with the soldiers because he knew it was all part of God's amazing plan. Although he fed hungry people, healed the sick, and taught many people about God, the reason Jesus came to earth was to die on a cross and take the punishment for sin that you and I deserve. Jesus chose to trust and obey his Father God, but you and I, and everyone in the world, have chosen to trust in ourselves and to disobey God. The Bible has a name for this. It's called sin. In the Bible, God tells us to be happy with the things that we have and that we can do. Perhaps your friend at school is really smart at maths and they always get better marks than you. When you compare yourself to them and wish you had their high scores, that's sin. There's a lot of things that are sin. Maybe you get angry at your friends or you'll hit your siblings, something like that. But listen to this verse in the Bible and you can tell me why sin is so serious. So this is from the Bible as well in a book called Isaiah. And it says, but your sins have separated you from your God. So you probably know why sin is such a bad thing. It's because it separates us from God. And God hates being separated from us. And he wants to repair this terrible thing that has happened between you and him. That's why he planned that Jesus would come to earth and allow himself to be treated so badly. So that Jesus could forgive our sin. Because Jesus forgives sins. Now unfairly, Jesus had been taken away by the soldiers. But what would Peter do now? He decided to follow behind the soldiers and see where they took Jesus. So quietly, he followed the soldiers to the high priest's house. The high priest was a religious leader and he had a lot of power. And he really didn't like Jesus and he wanted Jesus to die. It was that bad. Peter decided to stay in the courtyard outside the house. And while he waited there with some servants, the Bible says that he warmed himself by the fire because it was the middle of the night and there's probably a fire going just to keep people warm. So while he was around the fire, a servant girl noticed him and she thought, that's one of Jesus' followers, isn't it? Whenever she mentioned it, Peter said that he didn't know Jesus. A second time, someone else came and said, you know Jesus, don't you? And again, Peter denied it. A little while later, Someone else questioned Peter, and this time he strongly denied knowing Jesus. Three times Peter said, I don't know him, just like Jesus said it would happen. Peter had done a terrible thing. He lied about being one of Jesus' followers. Why do you think Jesus lied about following Jesus? Perhaps he was worried that if he told the truth, something bad would happen to him. Peter was a follower of Jesus, but he had lied and sinned against God. But some of you here at SML might be followers of Jesus too. Even if you have trusted Jesus as your saviour, savior, you will still sin. God hates sin and he wants you to keep on learning how to obey him and do what is right. But this can be hard, can't it? Maybe you still lose your temper. Maybe you're trying to stop swearing when you get angry, but you still use bad and hurtful words. Maybe you're trying to stop being mean to your friends when you know you shouldn't be, but it just keeps happening. Maybe they might ask if you're a Christian and you'll say, oh, I'm not because you don't want your friends to know. And when you sin, you might worry whether God would still love you. The same way Peter probably wondered if Jesus still loved him. But if those thoughts come to your mind, you need to remember that the moment you trusted in Jesus for your salvation or you being saved, he gave you new life on the inside, eternal life. This new life with God is one that comes from God and it lasts forever. Nothing will separate you from him because Jesus forgives sin and he will never stop loving you. And this is really important to know, especially when you've sinned and you feel bad about it. And Peter, like you probably have, knew that he'd done something terrible when he lied. Can you imagine how sad and sorry he felt for making this wrong and sinful choice? The Bible says that Peter went away and he cried real tears of sadness. Even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, he was put on trial and he was even sentenced to die by kneeling on the cross. He was beaten and whipped and he'd had a crown of thorns pushed into his head. That was really, really sore. The soldiers made him carry his cross, a big heavy wooden cross, up a hill and he was crucified. And this is the worst way that someone could die in Jesus' day. We know that one disciple there called John was there with Jesus. He wasn't on the cross with him, but he was there while Jesus was on the cross. We don't know where the others were. Peter might have been there. He might not have been. We don't know. But it was a terrible, terrible day for all of Jesus' friends. 
Jesus died this terrible death, but he rose again because he loves you and he wants you to have something very special. So earlier you probably heard me say that he will give us eternal life. Do you know what this eternal life is? Eternal life is a gift for everyone who trusts in Jesus and it is being given a life with God, not just in the future when you die, but also in your life here on earth. Eternal life is something that you have the moment you trust in Jesus and it lasts forever. Perhaps you've been listening to God's word at SML and you know that you should trust in Jesus for your eternal life. Um, but if you've not done that yet, it's okay. If you're sorry for your sin and you trust that Jesus is the one who can forgive you, and then you need to talk to God about it. You can trust in Jesus for eternal life right now, even while I'm talking. Just remember that Jesus forgives his sin. You can have your sin forgiven and have this wonderful gift of eternal life. So Jesus' followers couldn't understand everything that was happening. Jesus was now dead. Perhaps Peter wondered if he could ever be forgiven for denying him. But on the third day of Jesus being dead, he rose from the tomb. And Peter heard the most amazing news from some women. They came down and said, the tomb's empty. Jesus is alive. Could it be true? Peter and the other disciples didn't need to wonder long because Jesus appeared to them twice. There was no doubt about it being Jesus either. He was alive, but Peter denied Jesus. Could their friendship ever be the same? Peter decided to go back to what he knew, and that was fishing, where Jesus found him. Peter and six other disciples were out all night on a boat fishing, but they didn't catch a single fish. But whenever they were out on the boat, they saw a stranger on the shore, and he shouted to them, put your nets out on the other side of the boat. And they did that, and the net came back, bursting with fish. The disciples wondered who this stranger was. They looked over, and suddenly John recognised. Peter, he shouted, it's Jesus, it's the Lord. Peter was so excited to hear that that he jumped into the water and swam to shore to go see Jesus. The disciples then came in on the boat behind him. When they got to the shore, Jesus said, bring some of the fish you've caught. They saw that Jesus had made a fire and was preparing breakfast for them. Peter went back to the boat and helped haul the heavy net full of fish back to the shore. Jesus then invited them, come and eat. So the disciples sat down and Jesus served them. When they were finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked, Do you love me? Three times he asked Peter this question. Even though Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus still loved and forgave him. Then Jesus said a really unusual thing to Peter. Feed my lambs, he said, and feed my sheep. Peter probably thought, well, I'm a fisherman and you don't own any sheep. So what do you think this meant? Even though Peter had made a really big mistake, Jesus never gave up on him. And Jesus had big plans for Peter's life. And he was trying to encourage him for the job he had for him. Feed my lambs and feed my sheep was Jesus telling Peter that he should tell others about following Jesus. If Peter really loved Jesus, then he would care for those who followed, just like a shepherd looks after his sheep. But he would not be able to do this on his own. He would need God's help. So if you have trusted as Jesus as your saviour, God the Holy Spirit is living in you. And he's your helper and he'll help you to live your life and to follow and obey Jesus. When you sin, the Holy Spirit will help you to know that you've done wrong against God. And you'll feel guilty and you'll wish that you didn't feel so bad. When this happened, God wants you to do something very important. As we read this next verse, listen and answer what you should do when you have sinned against God. So this comes from the Bible again, and it is, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and clean us from our unrighteousness. That just means our sinfulness. So God wants you to confess your sin. To confess means that you just tell God that you know what you did was wrong and that you're sorry for doing that. Sometimes we don't want to say sorry because it can be hard, it might feel awkward saying it, but a wonderful thing happens when we do say sorry. God really does forgive us. And because God always does what he says, you can know that he'll forgive you too. And this is because Jesus always forgives sin. Then you can thank him for your forgiveness too. Jesus ended his conversation with Peter with the same words he said when he first met Peter, back whenever Peter was a fisherman. 
He said, follow me. Jesus forgave Peter and wanted Peter to keep on following him. What would Peter do? It wouldn't be always it wouldn't always be easy, as Peter learned. And it's not always easy for us to be followers of Jesus either. Even when you have trusted in him as your saviour, sometimes you will sin. When you do, remember, Jesus forgives sin. Talk to God and tell him that you know what you did was wrong and against him. And God, the Holy Spirit, who lives within you and in all the followers of him, will help you if you do ask him for forgiveness. And he'll help you to keep on following Jesus, even when you've got it wrong. Peter trusted Jesus and God was helping him to learn how to follow. He didn't give up when it was difficult, but he kept on following Jesus and Jesus still had big plans for Peter's life. We'll find out more about those plans next time. Thank you very much. Hi boys and girls, today we're going to be doing the memory verse, but over the lockdown I haven't got my hair cut much, so first I'm going to go to the hairdressers. Hi boys and girls, I'm back from getting my hair done and I think it looks quite good, but now we're going to get on to the memory verse, which is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us all our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. There's a few difficult words in here, such as just, confess, faithful, purify and unrighteousness. But they're not that difficult to learn. Just means fair and impartial, like a judge whenever he's giving out a punishment to a criminal. Confess means owning up to something, which is just like admitting if you do something naughty. Faithful means remaining loyal, which is like God whenever we do stuff that hurts his feelings, like sin against him, he stays with us rather than walking away. Purify means to make clean or get rid of any dirtiness. Unrighteousness means imperfection, which is just like dirt. So unrighteousness and purify go well together. So it's a, quite a big verse, but I'm, we're all quite smart here. So I'm going to get rid of a few words. I don't have a cloth to help me wipe it away. So I've just got a, oh, a stinky sock. So we're going to get rid of two words here, okay? So not too hard yet. Can we all say it together? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. First John chapter one, verse nine. Not too hard, but we're gonna get rid of a few more words. We'll get rid of two more. Ready? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. First John chapter one, verse nine. It's getting a bit tough now, but we're gonna we're gonna get rid of a few more, okay? I'll take rid of I'll get rid of three because we're all quite smart. Ready? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. It's getting quite tough now, but we're still going to get rid of more. Oh, it's looking hard now, isn't it? You ready? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Now, that's quite hard, but I'm sure we can do all of it without looking or having any words on. Ready? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. First John 
chapter 1 verse 9.